truth be told that many of us miss out on the blessings of life, the goodness that God has tried to provide because all we've done is become content in skimming off the top and never dipping our deep dipper a little bit deeper in order to pull out the goodness that only God can give us. You live long enough you realize that those aren't just some pretty lyrics that we sing you live long and go through enough stuff in life and you'll come to find out just who he is I'm trying to talk to somebody that if you live long and go through enough in this life you'll know that he's great you'll know that he's marvelous you'll know that he is majestic You'll know that he's glorious. You'll know that he is a great and marvelous God. Is there anybody in here on tonight? Is there anybody in here on tonight? Don't make me feel alone. Is there anybody in here on tonight that knows that we come to praise? A great, a great, a great and a marvelous God. A great and a marvelous God. I'm going to say it to you, get it, a great and a marvelous God. Ah, it's good to be home. It's good to be in the house one more time. And it's good to be home. I was somewhere deep in Israel a few weeks back. I got a text on my phone from Pastor extending the invitation to come home. That was the fastest text I knew how to respond. That when he, when he asked, my answer was yes. Because I didn't want to miss an opportunity to come back and be with the people of God that loved me, that loved my wife, that loved my family. It's good to be home. That I came to Alfred Street at 18 years old. And if the Lord be willing, I'll celebrate my 40th birthday this year, that I've been here the majority of my formative years to sit under good teaching, to grow alongside brothers and sisters that held me accountable, stretched me further than I knew I could be stretched. And so to each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I see since last I was here, we've got two clocks up there, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the introduction short. We have two clocks. But if you hold the hand of your neighbor on tonight, we'll seek the Lord's face for what he wants to say. Our Father and our God, the one who orders our steps and numbers our days, the one that has privileged us with this opportunity to gather in this sacred assembly to give you and only you the praise. God, Thanksgiving is on Thursday, but for a believer, Thanksgiving is every day of our life. So God, I know I'm not alone on tonight that when I look back over my life, when I think things over for myself, God, I've got a reason to give you thanks on tonight. So God, won't you, we feel your presence already on tonight, but won't you invade our space? God, I don't know who is in the crowd on tonight, but I know that just like me, they need more of you. So Spirit of the living God, won't you touch and set us afresh on fire for thee? Touch my neighbor, oh God. I know not what this day has brought them, but I know, oh God, that I squeeze some faith in their hand to let them know that they're never alone when they walk with you. So God, go exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Let us have fresh revelation. Touch my lips, O God. Purge me, O God, if you will, please. That there be no gap between my words and your will. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let those that love the Lord simply say amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen one more time. On tonight, I want to take 
uh, launch from a familiar passage. If you have your Bibles on tonight, won't you join with me in a reading from the 34th Psalm, Psalm 34. And if you would stand that we might give honor and reverence to the reading of the Lord our God. Psalm 34. Uh, I'll be reading the first through the fifth verse. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you know it, say amen. amen. Psalm 34 reads like this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That was your cue. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's, that's enough for the time that is ours tonight. Won't you tell your neighbor the tag of the text simply is this true thanksgiving. True thanksgiving. Beloved, after almost 15 years of marriage, my wife and I have had enough experiences in life to walk down the road of Minnie Ripperton and go back down memory lane. <laughs> to remember Thanksgivings, if you will, that I shall never, ever forget. If you're like us, there are some stories not easy to forget about Thanksgiving. You know that family member, that uncle perhaps, you know the one that always showed up festive and in spirits. I guess I meant to say spirit. You know the one that you didn't invite but yet showed up at dinner time. We laugh now, George, but it wasn't funny back then that, that I remember the year of our eldest son's birthday. Israel was born on Black Friday, but one year it fell on Thanksgiving Day that I bought him something that Kiyasha had not authorized for me to buy. It was an electric ripstick. Any parent with a child over a certain age knows what a ripstick is. It's, it's, it's an inline skateboard uh, that, that was designed for you to really experience what it feels like to fly. Uh, it was this, I didn't just get him the regular ripstick. No, I went and bought him the motorized ripstick, the, the one that came with the turbo boost so that when you got up to a certain speed, it would launch you even further and faster so that you could really experience the exhilaration of flight. I don't need to give you all the details tonight to let you know that one minute he was riding and the next he was crying. I remember running to the door that afternoon, uh, rushing him upstairs to give him an ice pack and to tell him to take a nap because I didn't want my wife to find out that the very toy that she told me not to buy is the very one that had injured her baby. Uh, but he woke up no better. He woke up saying, Daddy, I can't feel my ankle or my foot move at all. And so my wife looked at me much like she's looking tonight out the side of her eye and sent us straightway to the ER room. Uh, she sent us on Thanksgiving to the ER while she stayed at home and stuffed that turkey, somehow thinking about how she was about to stuff me for what I had done to her son. Church that night, uh, she made the dangerous mistake of cooking while mad. Yes, sir, cooking while mad only to drop the pot holder into the base of the stove. And you know what happened next. The next knock we heard at the door was Fairfax County Fire Department trying to put out what I seemingly had started. <laughs> Deacon Monterio, what I can say without fear of contradiction is that each Thanksgiving has not always found everything quite in place. The family hasn't always been picture perfect and camera ready. 
Uh, Pastor, that that although things didn't always come out the oven right, that that one thing I found out for sure is this, that though there were times when things weren't perfect, there was yet a perfect God that stepped down into an imperfect situation. And that's reason enough for you and I to give thanks on tonight. Beloved, I come by to tell you that because I don't know what will happen in the next 72 hours. I don't know what kind of thanksgiving you'll set down to celebrate. I don't know who'll show up and yet show out, but there's one thing I do know that can help you on Thanksgiving Day. One thing that I do know that can help you through a difficult season of life. One thing I can tell you on tonight that's worthy and it's good on Thanksgiving Day and every day of your life, and it's simply this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall come continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. That the psalmist says in this 34th Psalm that I will bless the Lord. Before you shout too early, there, God has given me a new appreciation of what that psalmist David is trying to teach us on tonight that can help change the way you see Thanksgiving. Can I share it with you on tonight? Uh, The psalmist teaches us in the opening of that verse that we ought to have a purpose-filled praise. There ought to be a purpose-filled praise. Holla if you hear me, somebody, because sometimes in life, that's the hardest thing to do. Looking at the circumstances. Tired from the hills you've had to climb. Emotional about the people God has seemingly edited from your life. Overcome by the vacant seats that weren't vacant last year, but to be vacant this year. And if you'd be honest this evening, you'd admit that in light of what I've been through, uh, I'm I'm here, but I'm wrestling with the fact that giving praises to God is not always easy to do. Have you ever been there tonight? The David starts out from the beginning and lets us know, beloved, that the purpose of praise never denies what you've experienced, but the purpose of praise is to equip you with the strength that you need to trust God even when you're tested by God. The purpose of praise never denies what you've been through, but the purpose of praise is to strengthen you to trust God even when you're tested by God. That he never sends you through, beloved, and forgets about you. But he designs life so that the stuff stuck on the inside of you someday, somehow, has got to come out of you in order to prove that the blessing isn't tied to what he does. The blessing is never tied to how he makes me feel. That The blessing isn't dependent on him showing up like I like. No, the blessing is always tied to who God is. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Can I reach out to you this evening that, that it really is good to come back home, good to be with our village, the people who took us under their wing and showed us ah, how to serve in ministry, that Dorothy had it right. There's no place like home. And What we miss most about being home is the spiritual and the physical food that we have been fed. We haven't had smothered turkey, wings, and shrimp etouffee in a long while. (laughs) We've been lost without some hot sausage and some red beans and rice. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But above all, what we miss from Reverend Marla's ministry of hands and pots and pans is a good bowl of gumbo. Let the church say, bless his holy name. Now, don't play yourself. What you may may be good, but it's not a, it may just be a cup of soup because if your roux ain't right, there's no gumbo in it at all. I'm just trying to help you to see this tonight. I remember the first time mom brought me to the stove, allowed me to fix myself my first bowl of gumbo. She, she took me to the stove and as I approached that gumbo pot, I took my spoon and pulled out some of the goodness and made my way back to my seat to enjoy my meal. Y'all know Reverend Marla, she came over with that smile on her face. 
uh, looking to inspect and she saw what was in the bowl and said, Dust, you ain't got no gumbo in that bowl. I looked at the bowl and looked back at Reverend Marla and was confused because I saw something in the bowl, but when she looked at it, she knew that I had left something in the pot. She marched me back, beloved, to that stove, gave me a lesson in life I won't soon forget. She said to me these words that if you really want to enjoy the gumbo that I've labored for you to have, if you really want to enjoy all the goodness that I've put in the pot, sometimes, son, you've got to take this little dipper and dig a little deeper in order that you might pull out what God has provided. And I didn't just come to talk about some gumbo on a Monday night. I came to talk about the blessings that can only come from God. Because the truth be told that many of us miss out on the blessings of life, the goodness that God has tried to provide because all we've done is become content in skimming off the top and never dipping our deep dipper a little bit deeper in order to pull out the goodness that only God can give us. What am I trying to say? A new Louis and some Louboutins. You don't have to dig deep in pot. You can pull that off the surface. That diamond rings and sparkly things, that's not deep. You can get that off the top. But I dare you to mess around and get sick with something Robitussin can't cure. I dare you to get in some trouble that even a good lawyer can't get you out of. I dare you to see some chaos around and have God walk you through a place where you're in perfect peace in order that you can have a taste and see moment to know that the Lord is indeed good. That the true reason of thanksgiving doesn't rely on what I realize that I don't have. The true reason for thanksgiving is a reminder that through it all, God is still good. That's my reason to rejoice on tonight because he's been that key that's opened up the door. That he's been my friend when I didn't have another friend I could depend on. That when you reach a point in life when you can dip your little dipper just a little bit deeper, you find out that with God there's always something better in the pot. Stay with me tonight that, that when the psalmist says, bless the Lord, he literally means kneel before the sovereign. When David says, I will bless the Lord, he's not just talking about kneeling before the sovereign. He's talking about getting in position. Because, beloved, I've been through enough in life to know that sometimes there are some things that you're better off not standing in. That, that if you really want to hear God better, the best way to hear God is when you get down on your knees. That if you really want God to speak in your situation, the best thing for you to do is lay out on your face. That if you really want to hear God better, you can't just be standing before him. You got to learn how to get in position and kneel before him. Pastor Wesley, that was the best advice Mother Wesley gave me as I was transitioning to heritage. She said, son, if you really want to hear from God, you got to learn how to wear out your knees. If you really want to hear from God, you got to learn how to wear out your knees. The David doesn't deny that life is difficult. Oh, but David tries to encourage us that sometimes in life, you've got to change your position in order that God can change your perspective. I'm not talking about what somebody else told me. I'm talking about what I know for myself. That my survival is tied to my ability to change my position so that God can change my perspective. I will bless his name. Come on tonight with me. Follow the text. David moves on from saying, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times to say, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. 
I got to let you know, Alfred Street, I love this David, this determined and defiant David that states in season and out of season that there'll never be a moment where I'm silent and subdued on giving the Lord the praise that he's worthy of. Psalmist says his praises shall ah, continually be in my mouth. That that word praise isn't just about what comes from your mouth, but what I offer with my life. This praise isn't just a motive from what comes from my mouth, but what I offer God with my life. Because you can say more with your life than you'll ever be able to say with your mouth. David knows that life will not always be sunny side up. He knows that storm clouds will hover and hang low. But David says that I've literally made the choice to control what comes out of my mouth so that what flows out of my mouth is rooted in the faith of who I am rooted in. That far too many of us miss this and can't climb out of the ditch in life uh, because we don't take authority over what comes, what flows from our mouth. We seek lack and we speak lack. We see limitations and we speak limitations. But when you've been with God long enough, what you experience isn't based on what you see, but it's confirmed by what God says. Here's the spoiler alert. Go on and watch Harriet. You'll find it for yourself that I can see because of what God says. I can believe because of what God says. That I don't need him to work it out before me. I can trust him even when I've got to follow him. Why? Because I believe in what God says. That God says I shall live and not die. God says he shall keep me in perfect peace. That God says that I am the object of his love. Baby, what you see ain't what I see. What I see is rooted only in what God says trying to help somebody tonight my sister you need to keep a perpetual praise my brother don't let the wrong thing control your conversation when David says his praise shall continually be in my mouth he's really saying I offer myself to speak well of him so that I don't give life to the things that are trying to take out my life It's Thanksgiving time. I thought at least somebody would stand in agreement and say amen. Because some people can't praise God because they're too busy cursing their circumstances. Oh, some people can't praise God because they're, com they're too busy complaining about what's not going according to plan. But when I praise God for myself, something starts to shift around me. Something starts to settle over me. Something that reminds me that whatever I'm in, I'm never far from him. Why? Because my life is in God's hands. Praise is pivotal in the life of a believer. That it's hard to praise God and be paralyzed in a problem. Oh, it's hard to praise the Lord and not change your perspective about the problem. Because when I praise him, beloved, I release what I've been holding on to. Come on, I'm trying to help you get to the table tonight that when I praise him, I bind up what's been binding me. That when I praise him, I declare, I'm not about to buckle that comes what comes from my mouth shall always be God's praises. Is there anybody in here that'll praise the Lord with me? Anybody in here that'll praise the Lord with me? That's far too few. Is there anybody in here that'll praise the Lord with me? Come on and do it for yourself on tonight. Come on and give God the praise that he's worthy of. We got about nine minutes and 45 seconds to get this one in. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise, praise ye the Lord. Praise him for yourself. And I know some of y'all are looking at me like reverend. I'm, I'm an introspective Christian. I just process and nod my head and take it all in. Well, it's a good thing to process. But at some moment in your processing, 
the Holy Spirit will push in you that you can't sit and process any longer that what you must do is to open up your mouth, to lift up your hands from the gut of your belly, call out and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Psalmist reminds us, uh, Psalmist reminds us that we ought to have a purpose-filled praise. The Psalmist reminds us that we ought to have a perpetual praise. Finally, the psalmist reminds us ah, that we ought to have a personal praise. I will bless the Lord. His praise shall continually. I will magnify the Lord with... That's personal. Uh, there are some things, beloved, that you really ought not keep quiet about. You ever received a, good, a gift so good that you couldn't keep that thing to yourself? David helps us to know that there's a difference between personal and private. That's when it's, when it's personal, it's because it's happened to me. That when it's private, it means that I'm unwilling to share it with others. That many of us confuse what, was meant, what is meant to be personal for what is to be private. David says, magnify the Lord with me. It's personal, but we're going to do this thing together. Let us exalt his name together. And can I be honest tonight? The real issue, uh, the real crux of the matter isn't, mm, isn't that you deny God his credit. The real issue of tonight and why we make it private and not personal it's because many of us are ashamed of the places where God had to meet us. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. The real reason why we're private and not just personal is because we're embarrassed about the places he had to pick us up out of. Hey, y'all save. Go ahead. It's all right. It's all right that I'm no longer ashamed to admit uh, that God has had to pick me up out of some foul and low places. I wear the suit tonight to cover up what he has really done for me, but if I'd be honest about my journey, it's not always been easy and smooth. Uh, that, that one of the things I have not always been proud of is the fact that it took me so long, church. Y'all know it, you were here for me to finish up seminary. For those that were here, you knew that I was a student for far too long. I was a student so long that uh, when I saw professors and, and others on campus, they looked at me and thought I was a TA or visiting professor because <laughs> nobody ought to stay at the school that long. And I, was, I was embarrassed by the journey. Yeah. Then when I was finally cleared to graduate, I remember stopping by Dean Kinney's office and saying, I don't need to walk across anybody's stage. Just put the degree in the mail and I'll get it at my door. Dean looked at me and leaned in close to me and he began to smile. And what he said, I again will never forget. He said, Dustin, I know this part of the journey hasn't gone according to your plan. I know that there were some set backs that God has used as setups that you just can't really appreciate right now. But here's what he says, that if you don't walk across that stage, you take the glory from God. I'm trying to help somebody in hiding on tonight that, that if you don't walk across that stage, you take the glory from God and you deny yourself the opportunity to be a witness because there have been some people on the wings that have been praying for you. There have been some people in the wings that were believing God to make his next move. That there have been some people that never gave up when you gave up on yourself. And if you do not walk across this stage, you deny yourself to be a witness. What am I trying to say tonight? Ah, uh, that it's personal, but it's not private. What am I trying to say tonight? That magnifying the Lord is more than just an empty shout. But magnifying the Lord is to allow somebody else to zoom in on your life to see the hand of God work some things out for you and me. 
And there's somebody in this place that's wondering how you smile the way you smile. Somebody wanting to know who it is that makes the difference in your life. Somebody tonight whose tears are shaking hands underneath their chin. Somebody that's holding on by a thread and wants to know, does he really make a difference? That magnifying God isn't about being rock star loud, but allowing God to be rock star loud through your life so that others might come to want to have the same experience that you've had with him for yourself. And it's not enough to just say praise the Lord. You've got to live praise the Lord. Ah, because what God and others are looking for is a credible witness to believe in. That this faith is not for pretend. That this worship is authentic. That there's something more to this relationship that I'm pursuing with the Lord that he calls me to be a witness. Yes, it's personal. But it's never meant to be private. How do I know that tonight? I know that because that's what God did when he gave us his son. How do I know that on tonight? I know it because it was something personal that he could not keep private. How do I know it on tonight? Because he magnified his love for us when he allowed his son to be nailed to an old rugged cross. How do I know that it's personal on tonight? Because that's the same gift that could not be locked up in a borrowed man's tomb. How do I know that it's personal on tonight? Because it reaches to the highest mountain, that it flows to the lowest valley. And there ought to be somebody in here on tonight that's willing to give God some praise, willing to give God some glory, willing to give God some honor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people, that's your cue, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the give him the and give him the glory great things he has done I don't know what you're looking for this Thanksgiving season I don't know what will make you smile and make you shout but I just stopped by to remind you you've got a true reason to give God thanks Come on, bless the Lord for just a few seconds. You got 30 seconds of praise in you. You've got 30 seconds of giving God glory. You got half a minute to say thank you. If you know God has done some things in your life, if you won't praise him in church, where will you? If you can't give him glory in the sanctuary, where will you? Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that's within me. Hasn't God 